Module 4. Testing. Testing is what you do to check that your programs work. You've probably already done this naturally without realising how important it is, and probably without thinking about it at all. When you're writing small programs, it's quite easy to test that they work. You move the program to your micro bit, and the image you told it to draw works. Well done, your test worked. But what do you do when your programs get a bit more complicated and have lots of different options? For example, different buttons that can be pressed. You're going to need to plan your testing carefully. Think about a computer game with a character that you have to move through levels. How many times do you think that game was tested? Do you think it was only tested at the end, when all the programming was complete, once every level and component part has been created? Or was it tested throughout the creation? Would people test it randomly, just playing the game over and over to see what happened? Or do you think there should be some methodology to it, some planned way of testing it? When testing, you need to be methodical. This means having some kind of system to make sure you test every single part of the game with every feasible item of data and or input. You can't be expected to test in every possible way. That would be impossible and would take too long. Think back to the game. Let's just take the character movement. How many ways could you test this? Well, you can test every way that the character can move, one movement at a time. E.g., can it move up? Can it move down? Left, right, jump, crouch, etc. So how can you test your MicroPython program? You need to test any and all inputs, one by one, to make sure the correct output happens. For example, if you have code that works when button A is pressed, and another code when button B is pressed, then you need to test what happens when you click button A and then button B. To test it properly, you should repeat this in different ways. For example, A, then A again, then B, B, A, etc. This is because testing A and then B is not the same as testing A, then A. Likewise, it's different to B followed by B. All these combinations should be tested. If you do not have any inputs, but for example a series of outputs, then you just need to plug it in and watch what happens. When you start writing programs that include data, for example the user has to enter something, then you need to test it with three types of data. Normal. This is data that will normally be input to make sure the program does what it's supposed to with the data. For example, if entering your age and you put 15, this is acceptable. Erroneous or invalid. This is data that is not allowed. For example, if you are told to enter your age and you put 20099, this is not valid. Borderline or extreme. This is data at the edge of what is allowed. For example, you enter your age as 100. You may have a limit of 100 being the maximum. You can't always use all three of these types of test, but wherever you can, you must. This is how you can check that your program will do what it should, which will mean that your end user will be happy with it.